Hi, I'm Mr. Simons, and welcome back to our limited series on monetary policy on the channel. In terms of this video, this is number four in our series. And what we're going to be looking at in this video is how does the RBA maintain the cash rate at its target level. So in our previous video, we looked at how does the RBA actually change the value of the cash rate, not the textbook definition, but the reality. In this video, we're going to be discussing once the RBA has changed the cash rate, how does it make sure that the cash rate remains at its target level? So that'll be the focus for this video. In terms of the content, if you haven't watched the previous video or even the video before that, I strongly suggest you start there. That each video in this series, it builds on each other. The content helps the content, helps your understanding, and it's very hard to grasp all of it if you don't have those foundations in place. So start there, the previous video, or right at the beginning, I'll be right here waiting for you. In terms of where this information comes from that I've been basing these videos primarily on information provided by the Reserve Bank of Australia for students and teachers. They've done a, a really comprehensive job in explaining the process of monetary policy and how the reality differs from the textbooks. So links to all of those materials will be in the description. Okay, enough of the intro, let's get started. So how does the RBA maintain the target cash rate? Well, let's return to the Australian cash market, which is displayed here in figure three. And all of these graphs that will be used in this video come from the Reserve Bank of Australia and the link to the, uh, the document will be in the description. So if we're thinking about this graph, that the RBA has its target cash rate right here in the middle. So let's say, for example, in this uh, situation that the cash rate target is 1.5%. So that would mean that the deposit rate is 1.25 and the lending rate is 1.75. So that what we're saying here is that all transactions in the Australian cash market occur between 1.75 and 1.25 so that this is our policy interest rate corridor. So no transactions occur above and no transactions occur below. It all takes place in this range of the policy interest rate corridor. Just a couple of things to point out before we move along that the price here is the interest rate that occurs in the market and the quantity here is the quantity of funds that the supply of funds here, well, that's set by the RBA and the RBA alone. That's why it is a vertical line. And this demand for funds, well, that comes from the commercial banks. Okay, so if we're now looking here at figure six, what we're going to do is look at a specific example. So what we're saying here is that the RBA is going to reduce the cash rate. That's the perspective we're going to have a look at here. So what we'll do is we'll set up a couple of um, situations. So let's say that the cash rate target here is 1.5% just as it was in the left-hand side there. Um, this would again be 1.75% because the lending rate is higher and the deposit rate, well, that's 25 basis points below, 1.25 over on this side. So what we're saying is that the RBA starts at 1.5, we'll call that A, and then what it's going to do is it's going to actually drop the cash rate down to point B so that if we think about what the cash rate is doing in this example, that at point A, at point A, it's 1.5%, the original value, and then point B, it has been reduced to 1.25%. So let's grab a couple of different highlighters here. Let's say, let's put the lending rate in green. So the lending rate starts at 1.75%, but you can see here that it's actually going to be reduced so that the new lending rate here will be 1.5%. That we know that the new cash rate at B, okay, well, that's 1.25%. And then we'll grab a yellow highlighter here, is that essentially everything is shifting down. So now the deposit rate, that that's going to be 25 basis points lower as well. So the deposit rate now will be 1.0%. If we look on this side, 
the policy interest rate corridor stretches from 1.75 at the top to 1.25% on the bottom. On this side now, it is from 1.5% at the top and 1% at the bottom. So that the whole um, policy interest rate corridor has shifted down to match the new cash rate target from the RBA. And that also think about it, that all transactions, let's put this in orange, is that all transactions in this market will gravitate to the target cash rate. They will gravitate to the middle of the policy interest rate corridor. So this means that the RBA's target cash rate of 1.25% will be achieved in the Australian cash market. So the next step is, once the RBA has changed the cash rate, how does it maintain the cash rate at its target level? And this is an issue because the demand for funds in the Australian cash market changes all the time. If the demand for cash in the Australian cash market rises or falls, the RBA has to get involved to adjust money supply and make sure that the cash rate returns to its target level. So to do this, the RBA must adjust the supply of funds in the Australian cash market. It must get involved and change money supply in terms of increasing money supply or reducing money supply in the Australian cash market. As the RBA itself puts it, the RBA attempts to manage liquidity to shift the supply curve so that it intersects the demand curve at the cash rate target. When we talk about the supply curve, we're talking about the supply curve in the Australian cash market, so that level of money supply that is set solely by the Reserve Bank of Australia. So, to summarise it briefly, when the demand for funds shifts, the RBA adjusts money supply so that the cash rate is always maintained around its target level. How does this all work? Let's go to the whiteboard. So our first situation that we'll look at here, let's say that it will be... So what we're seeing in the Australian cash market is an increase in the demand for funds so that commercial banks need more money at this point in time. So we can see the cash rate target sitting here and we can see our policy interest rate corridor sitting there with the... the upper and lower limits being the RBA's lending rate and the RBA's deposit rate, respectively. So let's say that we're going to draw this increase in the demand for funds. So what we've got here is we've got an increase in the demand for funds in the Australian cash market. If we put this here, let's just do that. Let's just say that that is A, and that is our cash rate target at the original demand curve at D. When the demand curve shifts this way, can you see that demand and supply now intersect at B? And B is an interesting point because you can see that the cash rate target is much higher now. That before, let's say that this was 1.5%. And then here, this is maybe, it's not quite 1.7, but maybe B is approximately... Maybe it's like 1.6%, maybe, approximately. So that the RBA doesn't want the cash rate to be that level. It wants it to be 1.5%. That is the target. So if the demand curve is now D1, we're going to have to shift the supply curve to bring it back to the target. So let's just say... We'll put this in red now to match it up. So what we're going to have to do is we want to bring the cash rate back to this level. If this is our demand curve, we want to put it at C because we want it at that same cash rate target that it used to be. So what we're going to have to do is, as the Reserve Bank of Australia, is we're going to have to increase money supply so that if the supply curve shifts from S, we'll call that S, now across to S1, that we can see we are back at the original cash rate target. That at point C, the cash rate target is 1.5% and that this is the RBA's goal. So let's just go through a couple of points here to make sure that it becomes clear. 
So what happens is that the demand for funds increases from D to D1. And that's this movement here, right? That's where we start. Let's put a little one next to it. That's where we start. The second thing is that when there is an increase in demand, we see that there is an increase in the cash rate, that actually it rises from, it goes up from 1.5% to point B, whatever that might be, but we know that it is larger than 1.5%. So we know that B is actually larger than 1.5% and is not what the RBA is going for. So that the step three here is that, so what we say here in step three is to reduce the cash rate target. To bring it back to 1.5%, the RBA needs to increase money supply. So when we say MS here, that's just money supply, the amount of funds in the Australian cash market. And that if the RBA increases supply, that will reduce the cost of funds. So the RBA's actions here is to increase money supply from S to S1, that this is the, the RBA's actions in this step. So we need to think about how the RBA would actually do this, right? Let's scroll down a little bit. So we need to think about how the RBA would actually do this, how it would actually increase money supply. And the answer is that the RBA uses domestic market operations or open market operations. These are identical and some links to this will be in the description below. But the process here is that, so the process here is the RBA buys back bonds from commercial banks. So basically it is buying an asset from the commercial banks. And if the commercial banks um, give the RBA an asset, they are going to want money in return. So the RBA deposits funds in the bank's ES accounts. This increases the amount of money in the market, which will increase money supply and then result in a lower cash rate target. So the point I'm making here is as the demand for funds changes in the Australian cash market, and in this example, as there is an increase in demand for funds from commercial banks, the RBA uses DMO or OMO, same thing, to change the supply of funds and to maintain the cash rate at its target level, to go from B back to that level C, which is where we started in the first place. Okay, so we're back in the Australian cash market with our very familiar figure three by this point in time. So we've got our cash rate target, our policy interest rate corridor, all of the things we've seen before. So in our previous instance, we did an increase in demand for cash. Let's in this situation, look at a decrease in demand for funds in the Australian cash market. That's where all of this is taking place. So that we've got here as being D1. So that this has all shifted that way. So let's put in, uh, let's call that D just so we can remind ourselves where we started. So we'll say that's A, and we'll say again that the cash rate target here is 1.5%. If we look at this when the demand curve um, shifts, we can see that now the target cash rate is much lower, that it's closer to 1.25% because we can look at this, we can say, okay, well, this line is 1.25%. This isn't much larger. So what we're saying here is that when we get this increase in demand for funds, when we get this decrease in demand for funds, that the cash rate falls and it no longer equals the RBA's target. In fact, it's much lower than what the RBA was trying to do. So in looking at this situation, the RBA is thinking, how can we get back to this target level? How can we create a new point C where the cash rate target level is where we want it to be? And the answer is, well, we can bring the cash rate up by reducing supply here. So if we bring our red pen, get our straight line, 
and you're like, all right, so we want to intersect with C so that our new supply curve would be here. So if we call that S and we call this S1. Now, you might be tempted to draw some kind of circle around this point here, but that doesn't exist because that's where the new supply curve exists with the old demand curve, but that no longer exists. So the only point we want to look at here is point C where we are back at the cash rate target. So the RBA has reduced money supply. So we look at that direction. It's a reduction in money supply and that that arrow, let's just make this a little bit clearer here, that what I'm doing is drawing this arrow between these two red lines, right? Not between the red and the blue, between those two red lines. So let's put a little bit of text here to talk about or to make it clear what we're talking about in this situation. Okay, before we get into point four, let's just go briefly over what I've set out here. So that in this situation, we're looking at the demand for funds falls. So we go from D to D1, a decrease in demand for funds. So if we think about it, if the cash rate started at A, with the increase in demand, the cash rate is now at B, which is below the intended target. So the RBA is not, not loving this situation. So to bring the cash rate back up to the target level, the RBA needs to reduce money supply. Remember MS, money supply, which means going from S to S1, which here is a shift left, which would increase the cost of funds because here is the cash rate at B. When supply decreases, here is the cash rate at C. So let's just have a look at how the RBA would actually do this. So if we look at this final step that to reduce money supply, the RBA sells bonds to commercial banks. If I sell you something, I'm going to want money from you. So the RBA sells bonds to commercial banks and then it withdraws funds from the bank's ES accounts. So that's taking money out of the Australian cash market, reduce money supply and result in a higher target cash rate so that we will go from being close to 1.25 to being back where the RBA would like it to be. So one more time, how does the RBA decrease money supply? It uses domestic market operations, open market operations. So this here, again, like we did with the other side, this is the DMO, OMO process. So in terms of thinking about the whole process, that the way that the RBA thinks about it, as they say, the important point is that in practice, changing the supply of cash through open market operations or domestic market operations is done to keep the cash rate target on a daily basis, not to change the target after monetary policy decisions. So what this means is that to change monetary policy, to change the level of the cash rate, the RBA uses the policy interest rate corridor. It shifts that whole thing up or down as part of its process of changing the cash rate, adjusting monetary policy. But once it has changed the cash rate, to maintain the cash rate at its target level, it uses domestic market operations, DMO, OMO, same thing. So to change the cash rate, policy interest rate corridor. To maintain it on a daily basis, that's where DMO, OMO comes into play. Okay, so in this video, we looked at how the RBA maintains the cash rate at its target level, not how it changes the cash rate, but how it maintains it. If you've got any questions, clarifications or comments, just put them in the comments. And as always, thank you very much for watching.